Good evening. Thanks for joining us for Source 16 News at 10. I'm Tammy Hancock. New this hour, a Hopkinsville teen accused of being involved in the shooting of two teenage boys last year outside an apartment complex had his trial set in Christian County Circuit Court this afternoon. Judge Andrew Self set a Tuesday morning, May 10th trial for 18-year-old Shannon Fairley of Florence Street. The 18-year-old is charged with two counts of first-degree assault and wanton endangerment and several drug-related charges. As Source 16 previously reported, Fairley was named as one of two suspects who pistol-whipped and shot at two teenage boys on June 9, 2010 outside a Woodland Heights apartment. After evading police for two weeks, Fairley was arrested and taken into custody on June 19 after Christian County Sheriff's deputies received a tip he was inside a car on 19th and Broad Streets. The case against a Fort Campbell soldier accused of butchering his wife's dog shortly after Christmas has been forwarded to the Christian County Grand Jury for review. Christian County District Court Judge Jim Adams today amended 42-year-old Mark Staley's charge to felony torture of an animal at the request of the Commonwealth. The Hopkinsville resident was previously charged with second-degree cruelty to animals. Judge Adams also set a 5,000 cash-only bond for the soldier and did not lift an order of no contact against Staley. The 20-year-old military veteran's wife, Ismelda, and two military escorts were also in court for what was supposed to be a district court trial. According to his arrest warrant, Staley's wife told police on December 27th that her husband skinned her dog with an incision from the dog's scalp down the back and then reportedly gave her the dog in a bag when she asked where the dog was. Meanwhile, Christian County Circuit Court Judge Andrew Self continued the cases of five Hopkinsville residents accused of burning a vehicle and attempting to set fire to a North Drive Street residence last year. Judge Self set another pretrial conference for Wednesday, February 9th for 23-year-old Rachel Jackson, 19-year-old Josh Dykus, 19-year-old Thomas Billings, and 18-year-old Jesse Decker, who at the time of the incident was a minor, as well as 43-year-old Roland Jackson. The Hopkinsville residents are charged with multiple counts of second-degree arson and first-degree wanton endangerment. In addition to the arson and wanton endangerment charges, Roland Jackson is also charged with two counts of attempted murder. Judge Self released Thomas Billings on his own recognizance. The judge also ordered him to submit to random drug testing and told him to stay away from North Main Street. According to Hopkinsville Police, on October 5, 2010, the individual shot into the North Main Street residence, set fire to a vehicle, and placed an explosive device near a family's home. It lasted about 30 seconds, but 30 seconds is all it took to change Haiti forever. One year after the devastating earthquake, the road to recovery has been a tough one, suffering aftershocks, hurricanes, and even cholera. Source 16's Michelle Heron shows us how one family is leaving their footprint in Haiti. Meet the Edgerton family, Jennifer, Todd, and their two children, Kyle and Megan. They are missionaries with the Mission Aviation Fellowship and have worked in Haiti since 2008. Jennifer and the kids were outside that historic day when little did they know what was about to happen. And it, it shook for about 30 seconds. It was long quake. And uh, fortunately, their house wasn't wasn't damaged much, but they could. I mean, it was knock the TV across the room, and I mean, there was a lot of stuff moving, but uh, but they were all right. Amid the chaos that followed, the internet played a crucial role in connecting the Edgertons with their families back home. Uh, I was I had just gotten home from work, and uh, Todd's dad emailed me, "Did you hear about the earthquake?" And I emailed back and said, no, what happened? He said, there was a seven-point earthquake in Haiti, in Port-au-Prince. Uh, but I think Todd and Jennifer are all right. A few minutes later, I got a call from another friend that had gotten a message from Jennifer on Facebook that uh, she was all right and everything was, everything was okay. They have also kept a blog documenting their time spent in Port-au-Prince and giving first-hand accounts of their experiences. Todd's company made the decision to send the family home for four months before they were allowed to return to Haiti. Now, a year later, they say progress is slowly being made. It's getting better. Um, Jennifer said there were 
probably one and a half million people in the tent cities, and it's down to about 800,000 now. Samaritan's Purse has been big down there um, with housing, uh, temporary housing. It's not real elaborate, going to last 50 years type housing, but it's something to get people sheltered and will last for several years. Uh, but it'll give people a start. It's still a place to be. This is just a small way of showing that Haiti is not alone. Michelle Heron, Source 16 News. If you would like to find out more about Jennifer and Todd, you can visit their blog at edgertonblog.blogspot.com. Now, the destruction suffered in Haiti from last year's earthquake also hits close to home. All of our viewing area falls around the New Madrid Fault Zone, which is approaching its 200th year of major activity. Christian County Emergency Management Director Randy Graham spoke with Source 16 about the damage the fault has caused in the past. When the one hit in 1811-1812, it was a series of earthquakes in that uh, year there, that uh, or two years, that uh, you know it, it was ringing church bells in New York City. So obviously, if it's shaking the ground enough here to ring church bells in New York City, then obviously we're going to have damage. As we near the anniversary of the New Madrid earthquake, some officials are speculating that it's time for Mother Nature to strike again. And without historic downtown buildings being earthquake proof, Hopkinsville could suffer a considerable amount of damage. We're, we're still close enough that, uh, you know, we're, it's going to affect our infrastructure, water lines, gas lines, that type of thing. Um, older buildings that are, um, that, that are not wood construction, you know, we're looking to face some problems there, or very large buildings. With the threat of any natural disaster, Graham says it's important to be prepared. We want people to be prepared to take care of themselves for at least a minimum of 72 hours. You know, prepare a kit, uh, prepare a home plan, an emergency plan, an emergency communications plan to where if you lose contact with your family member, then you've got someone not locally but out of the area to uh, try to contact. Federal as well as state and local officials are currently planning a national level exercise for the eight states surrounding the New Madrid Fault Zone in May. Stay tuned to Source 16 for details. We now have an update to a story concerning a Fort Campbell soldier who was ordered back to Afghanistan after going AWOL in November. According to reports, 30-year-old specialist Jeff Hanks has now entered a mental health treatment program here in Hopkinsville. The soldier's wife, Christina Hanks, told reporters that instead of deploying as scheduled, her husband is now staying at Cumberland Hall and will likely be there for about a week. Fort Campbell spokesman Rick Zebka told Source 16 earlier today that for the time being, Hanks will not be deploying. Zepka also stated, quote, in the past three years, Fort Campbell has made a considerable and laser-focused effort to direct the required resources to ensuring that all soldiers who need help get help. As Source 16 previously reported, the specialist was ordered back to Afghanistan to finish out his deployment after going AWOL and turning himself into military officials on Veterans Day. Well, Kentucky's newest U.S. Senator Rand Paul will be in Hopkinsville tomorrow. Ram Paul will be the featured speaker at the noon meeting of the Kiwanis Club of Hopkinsville at the Memorial Building in downtown. Republican Senator Paul, a Bowling Green ophthalmologist, was officially sworn in last Wednesday during a ceremony at the nation's capital. Senator Paul's recently selected Deputy State Director Rachel McCubbin of Hopkinsville will also attend the Kiwanis meeting. McCubbin is a Kiwanian and past president of the club. She recently served as the field representative in the 1st Congressional District for U.S. Senator Jim Bunning. Motorists traveling the breadth of Pinaral Parkway in Hopkins County over the next couple of months need to be aware of traffic restrictions. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Spokesman Keith Todd says the daytime lane restriction is to allow clearing of damaged trees and overgrown brush. The work area runs from the Hanson Kentucky 281 interchange at exit 44 to the Slaughter's Calhoun Kentucky 138 interchange at exit 54. According to Todd, a one mile long work zone will be established along this section for brush clearing work from time to time as weather allows this month and in February. Motorists who regularly travel this section of the Pinaral Parkway in northern Hopkins County should be alert for periodic daytime lane restrictions. A patch of ice caused an 18 year old male to crash his pickup truck into a tree on Petch Lane yesterday morning. 
The Christian County Sheriff's Department reports Justin Pruitt of Petsch Lane was driving north on Petsch Lane approaching Sisk Road when he hit a patch of ice. Deputies say Pruitt's truck then spun around clockwise, ran off the road and took out a road sign before the pickup's rear end crashed into a tree. Pruitt told deputies that he has no memory of the accident. According to the report, Pruitt was taken by private vehicle to Jenny Stewart Medical Center for treatment of injuries. Now here is Hopkinsville Christian County Crime Stoppers coordinator Paul Ray with the featured fugitives of the week. This week, probation and parole need your help locating two wanted fugitives. Police are looking for 54-year-old James Thomas Quarles, who's wanted for absconding probation. Quarles is a black male who stands six feet tall and weighs 190 pounds. His last known address was the 300 block of East 7th Street. Police are also looking for 33-year-old Terrence Durrell Green, who's wanted for failure to appear for probation violation. Green is a black male who stands 5 feet, 7 inches tall, and weighs 150 pounds. His last known address was the 200 block of New Gritton Avenue. If you know where police can locate these wanted fugitives, and we've got cash waiting for you, pick up your phone now and call our tips line at 887-TIPS. If your information leads to an arrest, Crime Stoppers will pay you a cash reward. And remember, we will never ask your name, and you will not have to appear in court. Well, this week's Fugitive of the Week. I'm Officer Paul Ray for Crime Stoppers. And tonight's Powerball jackpot is $67 million, and Friday's Mega Millions jackpot is $30 million.